As soon as we drilled up, there's a mark down here on the bottom. Drop down on that one, see what happens here. Oh yeah, it looks like it's coming up for it. Let's see if we can get Chase in here. Oh, there we go, here it comes. There we go. Just got out here again on Cold Lake. Got a chaser, nice to see an active fish like that. Just jigging with a little hair jig to start off the morning. The bite's been a little slower the last couple days, so always good to start off with an action bait until you can get it dialed in here. Just going on a little bit of a run. So I love lake trout. Those peeling runs are always awesome. Feels like it might have a little bit of weight to it. Forgot to check my drag before we started, so I'm not 100% sure. That drag's a little bit loose. Just under the ice here. <laughs> yeah, there's a good way to start off the morning here. Tsimoto meathead tipped with a piece of sucker belly, but yeah, beautiful lake trout to start off the morning. But we'll get this fish right back in the water and we'll get back down there and see if we can get a few more. Yeah, so as you probably guessed, we're back out on Cold Lake again today. We're going to check out a few little locations that I had mapped out in the summer and I'll probably explain why I think they're a good winter spot. So we're just at our first spot now. We already got hooked up with one fish. Yeah, so the first spot we stopped at was 82 feet, kind of on the steep part of the break where it comes up. There's a nice feeding shelf up top here, 30 feet right in front of us. So yeah, hopefully these fish are coming in to feed, pushing some bait up against this shelf. And yeah, if we don't get hooked up here, we'll probably move out a little bit deeper, see if they're kind of cruising the basin and then we'll move on to some more spots, so stay tuned. Hopefully we get hooked up here soon. There we go. Right off the bottom there. Just drop the hair jig down there again. It's been pretty slow for the last 15 minutes. Haven't really marked many fish. Just cycling through baits here, seeing what I could get hooked up on. And Yeah, hair jig seems to be the way to go here. Moved out a little bit deeper here. See if I could find some fish on the basin. There was a few fish up in 80 feet this morning, but it wasn't, wasn't anything too crazy. I've been out here for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And sure enough, hooked up again. See it's starting to gas off its bubbles. That's a good sign. Doesn't appear to be too big, but you never know. The leader here, so he's just under the ice. Just a little air fish. Give you guys a quick look and get this one right back in the water. Yeah, I dropped down this little Tissimoto hair jig, the meat head, tipped with a piece of sucker belly, and yeah, that's what caught that last fish. So, I'll drop her back down there and see if we can get a few more. Here we got one, Jason. <clears throat> Missed it the first time, he's gonna hit her here again. There we go. I yeah, just work in the water column, reeling up and dropping down, and yeah, sure enough, hooked up again here. Always good to pay attention to your electronics when you see that little flicker come off the bottom. Lots of times it's a fish, and you start reeling up, you're gonna get hooked up. So it sealed the deal on that guy. It was just a falling bait, and quick change in direction and he raced up after it missed it the first time and crushed it the second time about 20 feet under the ice here I 
got the leader, so here he comes. Just a small little one. Those meatheads are great action baits, but yeah, I'll get this fish right back in the water. Oh, I got one coming off the bottom here. There you go. Another chaser right off the bottom. Seems like these ones out here are a little bit more aggressive this morning. Been out here for 40 minutes now and it's our third fish. cold there out today some of this flood water is froze up now makes travel a little bit easier but there's still a few places where it was pretty soft but it's kind of nice to be able to get out and explore a little bit fish is 20 feet under the ice here again feels like one of those smaller smaller ones similar to the last couple we had so the leader so just under the ice of fish but I'll get this one right back in the water here there we got one chasing again right off the bottom just bounce on the bottom a few times there we go yeah just seems like bouncing on the bottom draws those fish in and as soon as you reel up those fish absolutely fly up after it just switch to a pole dancer here <laughs> this fish is going on an absolute cruise here, right back to the bottom. Time to drag him. I turn to fight him. There's like a little bit of a better fish here. feet down it's coming up pretty easy now twenty feet down just under the ice here His head turned up. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish. <laughs> yeah, check this fish out. Absolute beauty. Nice fat fish on the TC Moto pole dancer walleye color. But yeah, absolute beauty fish. We'll get it right back in the water here. There we go. Same thing, just bounce it off the bottom a couple times and sure enough, it's actually just checking my drag for the first little bit and one hit. Definitely a smaller fish here. Starting to burp a little bit, that's good. Always keep an eye on your electronics when you see them burp. It's always uh, 
Good sign that they're releasing that air as they're coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's a tiny little laker here. Man, what an aggressive fish. <laughs> tiny little laker on the Tissimoto pole dancer. I'll get the hooks out and get them right back in the water. There's a fish up higher here. We'll see if we can catch it. Oh! That one came off the bot right off the bottom. I didn't quite see it right away. <laughs> it's definitely a smaller fish. Yeah, that's the nice part about these pole dancers is that they give out a lot of vibration and attract fish in from a long ways away. So great bait for getting fish to chase and. That's what we're using again here for this fish. Right under the ice here. Another small one. Yeah, it's a smaller fish, but you can see absolutely choked that thing down there. So get these hooks out. We got it right back in the water. So yeah, in behind us here is a, uh, comes up pretty quick to 30 feet. Kind of like a nice little ridge hump area. On this morning I was fishing right up next to the steep part of the break in 80 feet of water. And this afternoon I've moved out to 130, kind of fishing more of the basin side of it. I'm probably gonna make another move because there's a nice inside turn just not too far away on the same little piece of structure. And I love inside turns for lake trout. So I'll probably give that a whirl before we wrap up the day. But yeah, you're looking for nice steep breaks um, from that go up to shallow water and drop off into the deep. So you can fish those breaks right up tight against it or you can fish more towards the base and where it gets more gradual again. Or sometimes those fish will be right up on top feeding in that 30 to 40 feet of water. So you gotta kind of keep an open mind when fishing for lake trout like that. But see, I keep an eye out for bait when you're looking at spots like this because a lot of times that bait will hold some lake trout. And if there ain't any lake trout there to start with, that bait will attract some in eventually. So yeah, just keep an eye on your electronics when you're jumping around working these pieces of structure because you never know when you can find some bait and that'll lead to lake trout. There's one chasing up here. Missed her the first time. There we go. Hooked up. I just seen that one come off the bottom there and sure enough, we just got fishing here. We literally two minutes on the camera. We just got down there and jigged a couple times and yeah. It's nice to see some aggressive action like this again. Just dropped off on the other side there. Kind of on a inside turn. Definitely a good spot for lake trout when you're fishing those big drops and get on the inside turn. Kind of acts as a corral for them. So this is about 20 feet down here. Under the ice here. Oh, yeah, an awesome colored fish. Yeah, nice fish there on that pole dancer. I'll get the hook out. Give you guys another look at this fish. It's a Really nice colored fish. I take a look at that. I'll get this fish right back in the water. So yeah, like I said before, we're fishing that same piece of structure. We just moved 
down a little bit farther off the other side of it there's a nice inside turn those inside turns can act as a bit of a corral for those fish so yeah that's why we decided to fish this and yeah the fish right off the bat so we'll get back down there and see if we can get a few more oh here comes another one shooting off the boat oh. <laughs> that was an aggressive fish i didn't even get a chance to close my bail and reel up before he smoked me definitely feels like a smaller fish but yeah the action so far has been pretty good a little move definitely seems to be paying off Oh, he just pulled off here just under the ice. See the mark flickering out a little higher here. We'll reel up and just see. Oh, someone's racing off the bottom. Oh, man. <laughs> that thing absolutely crushed this. You can just see that faint line come up off the bottom, and all of a sudden we looked up. That thing was screaming up. I just switched to a different pole dancer, a little bit bigger size, the Twisted Tula B. It's one of my favorite new colors from TC Moto. It, uh, put a lot of big fish in the boat for me this summer. Oh, this one's starting to... Put the brakes on here a little bit. Should be just under the ice here. The leader now. There he comes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome fish. Nice and long here, and that pole dancer. All the way up to the main hook. But yeah, that's that twisted tulip bee pole dancer. Give you guys another quick look. I'll get this fish right back in the water. Yeah, so the twisted tulip bee pole dancer, this blade spins around when you reel up, gives those fish something to hone in on, creates a lot of vibration, tracks those fish in from a distance. Yeah, it's a great bait if you're looking for aggressive lake trout. And let's get back to fishing. I'm chasing here. There we go, hooked up. A smaller fish off the bottom there. Turn off the heater here. Had to switch her up there. Had a few chasers, but nothing would really commit. And drop back down there, and I had one come up a little bit. I put my hair jig on the bottom there. And sure enough, next time I brought it up, it came up pretty aggressive. Just under the ice here. Said I switched up to a hair jig there. A mead head. Get that hook out. Give you guys one more quick look at this little fish and we'll get her back in the water. Yeah, I think we're gonna call it a wrap for today. I had an absolute blast out here checking out a new piece of structure that I mapped out in the summer and just how those fish are gonna relate to it throughout the winter. Yeah, to start off the day, we started off a little bit shallower, 98 feet up on the main break, and then from there throughout through the midday we kind of moved out a little bit deeper more towards the basin area just to see see what was moving out there and then from there we moved to an inside turn also in the basin and yeah all the spots were kind of holding fish but definitely they were relating more to the basin as there's lots of bait down there today but yeah those pole dancers are definitely a ticket i love fishing pole dancers when exploring new areas it's definitely an aggressive bait that you're trying to get a reaction bite out of but 
yeah, today those fish were chasing and absolutely crushing it. So, so yeah, hopefully some of those tips help you guys make some decisions on some new areas. And yeah, if you like this content, hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you on the water next time.